But earlier today, I spoke to the Secretary of State, Karen Bradley, and I began by asking her about Theresa May's pitch to the sceptics. The backstop is the insurance policy that, the, that we give to the people of Northern Ireland to ensure that our commitments under the Belfast Good Friday Agreement are, are fully, uh, fully committed to. This is the insurance policy that there will be no hard border on the island of Ireland. That insurance policy has been difficult because the original wording of the insurance policy, if you remember, uh, was that Northern Ireland would be carved off. It would be an entirely separate customs territory. It would be effectively an annex of the European Union. And that's was not acceptable to the Prime Minister and to the government and to me as Secretary of State. And I think people do understand that and they either like the backstop or they don't like the backstop. But, but se setting that aside, how exactly is she going to give MPs a say in whether or not backstop happens? Well, that we negotiated to get rid of the Northern Ireland only solution. And we also have negotiated an option that's a choice of whether we extend the implementation period or go into the backstop at the point where, let's be clear, what we all want to see and what we all are working to Towards is a future relationship that's in place for the 1st of January 2021. But if that isn't the case, we have now got an option to extend the implementation period and not go into the backstop at all. And, and we will have to take a decision as to whether to do that. Now, clearly, there's pros and cons in the backstop. The, the free movement ends in the backstop. There's no payments to Europe in the backstop. The common fisheries policy ends. So, so in the backstop, there are some things that people are looking to achieve. But clearly, the implementation period uh, has attractions because it means that, for example, our trade deals that we have with the European Union uh, or the Union, European Union is currently negotiated with third countries would carry over. If we're not in the implementation period, that is necessarily the case and certainly isn't the case in a no-deal situation. So, quite clearly, we have a choice. And I think that uh, looking at Parliament taking that choice is, is, is worth doing. I think that's something that is a good idea because actually Parliament taking that decision and so do you on behalf think that of is the enough people... Is that enough to persuade some potential rebels to peel off and support the withdrawal vote oh. next Tuesday? We're taking time, I'm taking time as Secretary of State, the Prime Minister is taking time to meet colleagues and listen to their concerns. And often the concerns that you hear are on very specific issues and we're trying to address those issues and give people the comfort they need. But ultimately this is about leadership and a decision that we'll all have to take as to whether we want to see the Brexit referendum result acted upon and whether we want to see the United Kingdom leave the European Union in an orderly fashion or whether we want to go back to square one. OK. The DEP has repeatedly raised the fact that uh, paragraph 50 of last December's joint report, which gave, of course, Stormont a clear say on whether or not there should be any new um, regulatory barriers as part of the backstop, that was uh, deleted from the withdrawal agreement. Now, uh, what the DEP wants to know is why it disappeared. Well, it was not deleted from the withdrawal agreement. This is a sovereign matter for the United Kingdom. And quite rightly, I don't want us negotiating with Europe about how we do things as a sovereign country when we once we've left. Europe. But the joint so, report specifically said that yes. Stormont would have a say. So, now, again, there is no say. I was coming on to that. Um, the paragraph 50, the commitments in paragraph 50 of last year's joint report still stand. The government absolutely committed to there being Stormont having a lock and we need Stormont back and I'm sure we'll come on to that later. We absolutely need Stormont back for this. But we also need to ensure unfettered access to the market for Northern Ireland businesses as was committed to in paragraph 50. So if that's, so if that's the will, case, if it's still there, why has it been removed? But, I mean, but it, should it was never going to be in a withdrawal agreement because this is a sovereign matter for the United Kingdom. And I don't well, think... Caused a problem for the DUP. But I don't think anyone wants to see the United Kingdom having to negotiate with Europe about how we manage our affairs once we've left the European Union. This is a sovereign matter for the UK. We are working at how we as the UK, independent of Europe, can d make sure we deliver on the commitments. But the right. commitments stand. Nobody has reneged on any commitments from the joint report. What you say is right, that means Stormont would effectively have a veto on progress. If that hasn't been removed and it's still there, and that should reassure the DUP, Stormont could say, well, we're not going to go ahead with this because uh, we don't like it. Well, this is about changes to regulations during the period of the backstop that, are de uh, that come in through Europe on those matters that are required for North-South cooperation. So let's be clear, we're not talking about the whole range of European laws, but, but if in the temporary period we're in the backstop, there was a change in the regulations 
conditions that, that are required to ensure north-south cooperation in those limited areas where it's required on the single electricity market, on, for example, the rail services running to, uh, between uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland. On those matters, if there's a change in regulation, then Stormont has to legislate for that. And I think that that's absolutely right. Putting an awful lot of trust in a bunch of politicians who aren't even sitting at the moment in the Assembly at Stormont, are you not? Well, people were elected. These are these are politicians elected by the people to serve them. Now, well, they haven't we, been doing that for two years. We need to see them doing the job they were elected to do. We absolutely need to see that, and we need to see that sooner rather than later. Of course, we want to see the Stormont Lock, and we want to see that Stormont Lock uh, made uh, given people the comfort that that will happen. Yeah. We're looking at the best way to achieve that. But you can understand the nervousness on the part of uh, DUP MPs and others whenever they see. Uh, your government drag kicking and screaming to the publication of the legal advice and when that legal advice talks about the backstop plans risking a stalemate and protracted rounds of negotiations with the EU. We know the Prime Minister was told the arrangement designed to prevent a hard border here could last indefinitely and the UK could not lawfully exit from it without EU agreement. You can understand why Nigel Dodds and others are so nervous when they read that from the pen of the Attorney General. Well, the two points here. The first is about the publication of the legal advice. And there was a very, very important principle here, which was legal privilege that applies to advice given by a lawyer to its clients. And you clients. lost that vote and you had to publish. And, and so we published. But there was nothing in that legal advice that hadn't been said at the dispatch box by the Attorney General, the Prime Minister, or by me, or hadn't been published in the detailed uh, legal position that was set out and published on Monday. An unprecedented step, it has to be said. I have said publicly that I am uncomfortable about not having a unilateral withdrawal mechanism for the backstop. But you're still prepared to take but, the risk. But this is where leadership comes in. This is where political risk comes in. I have looked at how likely I think it is that we will be held in a backstop against our will. And in fact, the Attorney General exa asked exactly this question on Monday. He was asked, is there any possibility that the United Kingdom could be held in the backstop indefinitely against, his will, against its will? And his answer was a very unequivocal no. Now, this is a matter of political risk. I'm afraid there are some times in life where there isn't legal certainty over matters, that the issue becomes how much risk are you prepared to take. Now I believe the mitigations that have been put in place to ensure that the backstop either never, we never go into it or if we go into it it's temporary. I believe that the mitigations that are there and the comfort that I have received means that I believe that risk is worth taking yeah, but The difficulty that you've got is delivering. persuading others. The DUP have looked at it as well of and course. they have decided uh, and I'm sure they would say that they are offering sound political leadership to their voters and they are not averse to taking risks when it's a calculated risk. They've looked at the same evidence you've looked at and they've come to a very different conclusion. They're not prepared to gamble away the sovereignty of Northern Ireland as they see it, the, uh, the, the, the integrated nature of the United Kingdom, on a promise. But as I say, there are many things that happen in life where there isn't a binary uh, black and white solution, that actually there is a risk. And you're right to call it, Mark, a calculated risk. So you have to look as a politician and as a leader, you have to look at, at whether you believe the worst case will come to pass. And are there mitigations that you can put in place to stop the worst case coming into pass? Now, I believe that those mitigations are there. I do not believe that we will be in a situation where we'll be held in the backstop against our will. Well, that's your interpretation. We know what the DUP's interpretation is. It's not alone within unionism. You'll have heard the, first, the former First Minister, Lord Trimble, in Parliament saying today, um, if uh, the Commons and the Lords do not kill the backstop now, it will haunt us for years, decades, maybe even generations. I mean, was part of your calculation here that unionism and the DUP in particular would back your assessment and support the Prime Minister and you've got a problem because in fact you haven't been able to persuade well, Nigel Dodds. The, the, the Prime Minister said herself yesterday, that, or, or Tuesday when she opened the debate rather, that there are different opinions and there are some people who believe that we shouldn't leave the EU altogether and they are in Parliament and they are working to make sure we never leave and there are some people who believe we should leave the EU with no deal at all, that we should just walk away, cut ties uh, and have nothing to do with them. Now I say to both sides, 
Uh, to those who want to stay in the EU, the British people, the people of the United Kingdom spoke. 17 and a half million people came out and said they wanted to leave the European Union. And I'm a Democrat. I want to respect the democratic decision and democratic vote that we had. But for those that want to leave with no deal, I say that actually the risks of that are too much. Look at, look at the proposals that have been put forward by some on the Irish border. The, the way to deal with the Irish border would be to, to use uh, VAT declarations. It would involve every business in Northern Ireland registering for VAT. Now, I think that's quite a big regulatory difference for Northern Ireland to have to Great Britain. I think that's quite a threat to the union, actually, to put Northern Ireland businesses at a competitive disadvantage like that. So I say we actually have a proposal here, a future framework, a future relationship that will see the whole United Kingdom mm. treated in the same way. What about and your I future, want to go to that. Right. What about your future relationship with uh, the party that's keeping you in office at the moment, the DUP? Uh, when Nigel Dodds says this is potentially devastating for Northern Ireland, uh, when others in his benches use, frankly, more colourful language than that, which is uh, uh, an awful lot more critical, um, you have got a real problem, haven't you? Well, as I say, people have different opinions on this and we're working hard to understand exactly what the concerns are and exactly what we can do to address those concerns. I'm here to listen to those concerns, but I also say yesterday, for example, we had businesses, farmers, civic society from Northern Ireland flew to Westminster, came and spent the afternoon in Westminster and made themselves available to MPs from all parties and from all parts of the viewpoints on this matter because they wanted to have the chance to give MPs an opportunity to talk to them. But what they said was, in leaving the European Union, this is a good deal, and it's a good deal for Northern Ireland, and therefore we should work together. Now, of course, I want to address the concerns. I want to deal with those concerns, and I want to give people as much comfort as we can have. I'm Secretary of State. I have been privy to documents and information that simply cannot be given to the general public simply cannot be given to other members of parliament. Confidential pieces of government information from the negotiations. I've seen all of these and that's how I've reached the, the decision I've reached. And what I want to do it doesn't is really make help sure you, does it? See, I, I, I know better than everybody else. No, I've seen the um, evidence that I can show that. to other people. To, you know, believe me, take it on trust. Not, that's not how politics I'm works. I'm not saying that, that is at what all. You've just effectively I'm saying, said. though, that I reached the decision after many, many months of working on this. Now I need to make sure that I can address those concerns. Some of those concerns I share myself and I can address those concerns and I can mitigate them. That's the job I have to do. You've got five state. days to do it. And we're working hard at it. Yeah, and at the minute it doesn't look like you're being very successful. Well, as I say, I think that people need cool heads. They need to look at this in the round. They need to accept that if we're leaving the European Union, which we are, we need a deal to leave. We need a withdrawal agreement. And only withdrawal agreement, no matter what the future relationship, has to have a backstop in it. Because it has to have that insurance policy for the people of Northern Ireland. Not to so, make says sure the DUP. Gregory Campbell asked the Prime Minister about this the other day. He said, absolutely, it's a negotiating ploy by the EU well, and by the Irish government. It's not necessary at all. He can have his Who's view on that. Who's going to have a hard border, Gregory Campbell he says. He can have his view on that. I say that this is the guarantee to the people of Northern Ireland that the progress that we've had in the last 20 years is built Upon. I have seen but he doesn't some, believe you. He doesn't believe you. Well, that's what I'm working on to give him the comfort he needs. But I have seen in the months I've been Secretary of State, almost 12 months now, the incredible progress and the incredible opportunities and the exciting future there is for Northern Ireland. A, a place that will have a land border with the European Union and, and part of being the, the world's sixth biggest, biggest economy, uh, hopefully even bigger than that, with trade deals around the world. Now, this is a fantastic opportunity for Northern Ireland, and I say we should seize it.